I love people from Hawaii. They're some of the friendliest and most warm-hearted people that I've ever been around. And I'm not just saying that because I'm from Hawaii. But people from Hawaii aren't perfect. We have our own idiosyncrasies and after spending some time here in Hawaii, maybe some of those things that we tend to do may become a little annoying. And this isn't meant to be critical of anyone here in Hawaii, just more about my observations. And if you can't even laugh at yourself, well, try to relax. Calm down, bruh. And don't get nuts, okay? So the first thing is people in Hawaii insisting on reverse parking, where we go and we see a parking stall right there and we're driving and, oh, there's a parking stall right there. So we pull up and then we try to drive in and then we try to reverse back into the stall and then you got to double check the door and make sure that's okay. Oh no, we got to pull up now. So you got to change, pull up and then you go back and you reverse stall and then you check if the side is okay. It's, it's okay, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? And I know that there are studies about people saying that when you reverse into a stall, it's actually safer because you're able to see a lot more as you pull out. But I really don't buy that. I think that if you just are cautious and just take your time, actually you just pull out and it'll be okay. People will let you out, don't worry. By the way, that wasn't at all embarrassing that get choke cars looking at me, but that's okay. Frankly, I think it's just Hawaii people wanting to pull out when they leave real fast. But Hawaii people, man, they love to reverse into their parking stalls. The other day we were at the doctor's office and we're trying to find parking for our appointment for our son. So, you know, we get there a little bit early and there's this car who's trying to reverse into the parking stall. And instead of pulling into the stall that they could have just gone into, it would have been nice, easy and real fast. Instead, they decide that they want to reverse into a stall, but that would require them to actually pull up and then they got to turn the car around and then reverse in. So it's like they got to do a whole U-turn just to go and reverse in. Meanwhile, you got cars kind of lining up both ways, just trying to get past this guy. And it wouldn't have been so bad if they got it in, you know, one, maybe two tries. But the thing is, it took them about three or four tries of trying to reverse the car back and forth, back and forth. And even then, they parked on the line and I felt bad for whoever was gonna park right next to them. Now I have nothing against reverse parking into a stall. That's totally fine, but maybe be a little more mindful. If there's seven cars waiting for you, you might just wanna pull into that stall, wait until everyone drives by, and then you could readjust your car. Now admittedly, I do reverse park when we're in our building, but it's because we got two kids and sometimes it's a little tight and the way that the car doors work, it's just easier when you reverse, as well as when we have to get stuff out of the trunk, it's a whole lot easier when the back of the car, the trunk part is against the wall. So it's not so dangerous as cars are going by because you know, Hawaii drivers. But of course the best thing is when you got two rows of parking and you could just pull right in and pass that middle line. So now your car is actually pointed out and you didn't even have to reverse at all. So when you have to leave, it's just a smooth, easy way out. Of course, you gotta make sure no one else is trying to pull in or else, you know, could get kind of nuts. Of course. The next thing is Hawaii people and their loud cars slash mopeds. Now two things here, we have the loud music and we got the loud mufflers. First, let's talk about the music. I get it. I was once 16 years old and I thought the coolest thing would be to play the music as loud as I could so everybody around me could hear, you know, with the windows rumbling and the car shaking, you know, the interior plastic parts just rattling along to the music. So I get it. But once you graduate high school or maybe even college, maybe it's time to roll up the windows a little bit or, you know, listen to the music inside your own vehicle for once. And most of the time the music is hip hop or Hawaiian. And frankly, I can't even understand any of the music. I can just pretty much just hear the bass and plastic rumbling. I never hear classical or 90s pop. I guess it's just not cool these days. But back when I was growing up in Kaneohe, up and down our street, there used to be all these loud cars always playing their music every time they drive by. And even as a young kid, I used to wonder, how come they don't roll up their windows? They could probably 
hear the music a whole lot better. Now I admit I'm not an audiophile when I don't understand the physics of hearing music and that whole experience. When you play it that loud so that people 300 feet around you can actually hear what you're listening to. But still, I think that you could hear the music a lot better if you just lower the volume and close the windows. Now let's talk about those mufflers. <laughs> I thought we were past the Fast and the Furious fad we had going back in the 90s and 2000s, but people are still revving up those Honda Civics with the mufflers that make so much noise. I guess it turns heads, but I'm not sure the drivers of those vehicles understand the kind of heads that are being turned. Because I don't think I've ever thought to myself after hearing a loud muffler, wow, that car must be really fast. In fact, I think it's kind of the opposite because if I was to race a car, if I was to be into drag racing, I think I'd want a car that was actually quiet. So that way when I pull up to the line or people want to try and race me, they don't hear anything and they just think my car is very unassuming. Or at the very least, I think that the sound from the front of the car is a lot more important than the sound coming from the back of the car. And I think that people who are actually into cars can tell. They have an ear for certain engines and so they know when a car is actually fast. And then of course we have those loud moped mufflers. And I don't really understand those at all as the moped is making its way, struggling to hit 35 miles an hour. I don't know, is it to sound fast? Because we can see that they're not very fast. Again, I grew up in Kanyoi and there would be guys whipping up and down the street, struggling to go up our hill at 25 miles an hour, but making so much loud noise. Again, I don't quite understand Hawaii's obsession with loud mufflers in that sense, but Again, maybe it's just because I'm getting older. Speaking of cars, the next thing. Hawaii people and driving slow when it rains. I mean, it rains a lot here in Hawaii and you'd think that we'd get used to that, but still, every time it rains, Hawaii people just seem to drive extremely slow. And I'm not against driving cautiously. I think that's very different, but it just seems like once it starts raining and the road gets a little bit wet, people just seem to freeze up and it's almost like they don't know how to drive. Something interesting in Hawaii is that we often calculate distance between two places, not in any sort of metric of length, but actually based on time. So from Kaneohe to Honolulu, it's not 11 miles. It's 25 minutes with no traffic, 40 minutes with traffic, and of course an hour, hour 15 with rain plus traffic. And I get it, you know, there are concerns with hydroplaning, especially with the conditions of the roads we have here in Hawaii. But it just seems like it's an overcompensation for the rain. And if you're going to drive cautiously, you can always move to the right lane. And I'm going to be there. I'm not a fast driver. I'm a very defensive driver. So I usually move in the right lane. But sometimes I see people, they're driving so slow in the left lane and it's just creating all these problems because you got the drivers who are going to weave around and trying to get around everyone when if they just had an open path they could just go 20 miles over the speed limit in the rain and just let them go i'm not condoning that by the way but just saying that it does create some problems but i think we've pretty much accepted that hawaii people will drive slow in the rain just kind of help that's just the way things are the next thing is sign waving during election season i think hawaii is the only place that actually does that I don't know what the studies are on sign waving and how effective it is during election season where you have candidates or volunteers waving at everyone while we're whipping by at 45 miles an hour. Perhaps it provides some kind of social proof that this person or this candidate has a lot of supporters and so maybe that's meant to convince us to vote for them. Honestly, I don't really think that's the case. If anything, it's a major distraction as I'm trying to drive not because I'm looking at the particular name of the candidate, but actually when I'm driving, I slow down and I try to see if I recognize anyone. Like, is that my auntie? And I'm not saying that sign waving is easy either. I mean, it must be very difficult to stand out there in the hot sun, waving at cars all day, or even worse, if you're waving and all of a sudden the traffic stops 
because of the stoplight up there and now you're stuck waving to the same car just right over there and it's like you gotta pretend smile and wave i mean that could be pretty awkward or better yet when you see two rival candidates lined up with their supporters sign waving on the same road and i can imagine that there's a lot of mind games that go on as they're waving signs and i'm sure they're trying to one-up each other how's the backlit sun is it okay is it exposing for my face and the last thing i want to mention is how in hawaii sometimes the people are in a rush but yet we're all still on Hawaii time and it's this very challenging and interesting dichotomy if you've been here long enough there's like these two sort of opposing ways of life that sometimes conflict with each other and it's oftentimes very hard to navigate as someone who grew up here I thought about it a lot when I was on the mainland and I reflected back on my time in Hawaii. In Hawaii, we have this very, ah, no worries, take your time, bye-bye, you get them type of attitude. But at the same time, some people seem to be like they're in a rush, particularly when it comes to driving on the roads. When we have traffic and you gotta get somewhere, it's hard to plan ahead for that and oftentimes that leaves you in a rush. And when you're in a rush, you're just trying to get from one point to the next and you really don't often think about other people and whether they're in your way, you're just trying to get to where you gotta get to. In all my years of living here in Hawaii, I used to drive from downtown to Kaneohe side a lot, school, after work. So I'm very familiar with that route. And I remember as I was going up Like Like and going Kahikili, I used to always wonder why these cars are trying to weave in back and forth, almost as if they're trying to like race to get somewhere as fast as possible. <laughs> but the thing is, when you go on Kaikili, you know that it's gonna go from three lanes down to two lanes, down to ultimately one lane for Kamehameha Highway all the way up to North Shore. And I remember after the lanes kind of consolidate, I'd see that one car who was trying to cut in front of everybody going all crazy and nuts. And there are only two cars in front of me. And yet they're just weaving back and forth. And I never really understood that. It's like, we're on an island. When you know you gotta go somewhere, you gotta go somewhere. Hi. Oh, nope. Never know what's, there's three of them. Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See ya. And so I kind of wonder, was it worth all that weaving just so you could be two cars in front of where I was? And of course this rushing attitude is in other parts of life as well. Rushing to find parking, rushing to check out at the grocery store when you try to figure out what line to go to. There's this like rush mentality sometimes. And I know I'm not in that particular situation. I don't know what they're going through. They may be stressed and that's just the way that they react to stress. And it's a lot easier to be critical of others when it's not you, so I totally understand that. But that type of rushing really stands out here in Hawaii when everyone else is just sort of laid back. So these are just some of the observations that I've made after growing up and living in Hawaii for several years at this point. And it's not meant to look at these things that we do with the critical eyes if to try to change us, but I do think it's important that we acknowledge that yeah, we do act that way or we do those things sometimes. And, and maybe it's interesting to try to uncover why we do those things. But I do hope that we can at least acknowledge that we have certain things that we do in Hawaii and laugh about them. Because living so isolated from everyone else has its advantages and disadvantages. And I try to focus on the advantages that it does have and does bring to our culture here in Hawaii. I mean, frankly, we're forced to get along with people that we probably wouldn't want to get along with. We talk story with people, we befriend others that are different from us because we're isolated here. And I think that's for the better. And over time, we build this special closeness and togetherness that is so unique and so proud to just be from Hawaii because of the isolation. So sorry, Hawaii. Looks like we're stuck with each other, but I think that's a good thing. So thanks for watching and aloha.